So, because we're already up here dropping chance off, I uh, got a mate of mine who I used to serve with, Will, who uh, has a facility up here. He's working with uh, dogs. He's got a Belgian Malinois himself. He was in the Special Forces with me and thought I'd drop in and say good day. It's been a few years since I've caught up with him. Yeah, haven't seen him in a while and be good to check out his setup up here. Master of puppies, good signage, mate. Just gonna park right here. So many, so many spots for me. Come on. All happening, eh? Yeah, yeah cool, man. You too, buddy. It's a very long time. Yeah, hasn't it? A very, very long time. Oh, no. When was the last time I saw you? Mate, it would have been uh, before you moved up, because uh, you, still, you still had all the franchises going down in Sydney. Yep. All the Master of Puppies ones. Yep. And, yeah, I think it was probably, it'd have to be like six years. Mm. Like well, 17, it would have been... 18, something like that. Yeah. Long time. Mate, time flies, eh? I know. <laughs> well, mate, when I spoke to you last, it sounds like you're doing some good things. Yeah, uh, flat out. Big things. Big, 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 uh, big risks. It mm. uh, makes it worthwhile this morning. Mm. You're right, mate. Just relax. Just relax, boy. So, so how many dogs have you got at the moment? Uh, at my place. That you're looking after. Uh, so I own 19, and then I've got another <laughs> four. <laughs> Unlike I've got one Malamar, yeah. two cats. Two and kids, cats. and that's hard enough. And you've got kids. you've got three kids, 19 dogs, yeah. a cat. Don't you have a goat so or something? Yeah, four goats and a horse. And, a horse. and I'll tell you what, the, the, the hardest of all of that is my youngest boy. <laughs> oh, bro. I feel you, man. He is full on. You're wanting to do some stuff with her? Uh, well, I'm just I just got her. Um, so fostering her at the moment, or, or rehabbing, so to speak. She. Her, both her parents are qualified protection dogs, mm -hmm. and then they decided to backyard breed them and mm -hmm. just give them off to general public. Um, they went, they went to the shelter, and then the shelter for these guys they only adopt out to people who've had mullies or duchies before. Yep. So this is an experienced duchy idea. owner, mm -hmm. and four months old, rang up abusing saying, "Take this dog back." Really? Yeah. Super intelligent, really, really switched on. Mm -hmm. But you know, they're not—they're not dogs that general public should yep. really be going for. You know. Yep. Uh, you know how sometimes you get dogs, you do a step away or whatever, and then you'll come back. Um, and if they're just used to being freed straight away as soon as you come back, they anticipate it. Yep. So at first I thought that's what was going on, but it's not. So she's just so hyper alert and sensitive to everything. As soon as I make the decision in my head, I'm yep. gonna free you on this one, because yep. every other one's a yep. pretend one, she goes. And every time I say free, she's already launched. <laughs> and I'm like, this is Pretty how intelligent they are. Yep. You know, they're reading everything about me. I'm giving Body off language. a subtle, I've been doing this for a long time. Like yep. I know exactly what I'm doing and she's picking it. Yep. You know, and this is, not many dogs can do it. So yep. this is one of the things where I'm sort of showing a camera like this, this dog is impressive. Yep. And you can see why, they're working dogs, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they, they are too much dog for most people. Yep, definitely, agreed. If you're not buying a dog for working, don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Come through. So we've got our uh, little commando obstacle course here. I really built this for just younger dogs, for more right. environmental training, um, like we do with our work dogs, getting them used to different surfaces. So as soon as they come in, the, the lowest levels it's meant to be the easiest, but generally it's the hardest for some dogs. Yeah. But as you can see, they um, great that they can walk on and see through. Uh, moving platforms, like so. Even just a simple crate, something simple yeah, like that, yeah, and yeah, then the balls sure. at the end. Then going back to the start, we've got the little platforms, which go up and down. Um, this level, I can either, I can either go over the moving bridge, yeah. platform like so, or just going through all the chains. And, Stuff like yeah, that. Right so right. even that gets you know some some dogs. Yeah. 
Uh, even some of the big dogs struggle with this, but most of the Malinois puppies, so the working dog breeds, yeah. smash through all of these. A lot of them, you know, balk it at the start, um, but they get over it pretty quickly after a couple. Yeah, now I'm crawl through there with them. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet. I haven't had to, but uh, probably one day. All right, so this is our training room. So if we've got our one-on-ones, uh, our private training sessions, they've got this all to themselves. Or if we've got our boot camp training sessions, um, we can fit probably eight dogs, separate dogs, yeah. um, pretty comfortably. So this used to be a facility for horses. So it was a vet facility that uh, specialised in horse dentistry. Pretty much all on this side here used to be like vet consultation rooms. Yeah. So we've just turned them into bedrooms and staff rooms now. Yeah, okay. So these are, are the these? stables that we've um, that used to be for you know the injured and sick horses. Oh yeah. So they did have rubber floors in here, but now we've oh, we've got rid of those and just cleaned it up a little bit. We're just slowly making it nicer and nicer. Yeah, sure. Um, probably not as nice as the stay you guys have got out there. Um, yep. So big mower. You've got a bigger one than mine. Yeah. Um, so we'll start to go out to the the back. So you can let them off out if you want. Any uh, balls or toys out here? Uh, maybe. Ready? Go. He's obviously a bit toy driven. Not as driven as her. Uh, well, she. I haven't haven't really tried to push her onto toys just yet. Um, yeah, I just want to get her to bond to me and driven by me rather than. Yep. Uh, if she goes toy driven straight away. Yep. She's in an environment with 25 other dogs that are all yep. running around with toys. Yep. So I don't want to focus on that. I want to focus on me. Yep. And then the toy drive will definitely come later. Yep. Once we've got our relationship. Yep. Uh, but yes, mate. Water. Anything with wheels, like Wolfie walking around with a toy truck or something, she's just smashing it. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, don't do that. Or Wolfie's running along and she's like, happy, 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 and then yep. whack. Yeah. <laughs> Look, <laughs> even uh, I've noticed with my dog over the last couple of months now, if he's out here and he has a toy and another dog comes up to him, he just gives a little growl. Oh, he's a bit defensive. A little bit. Guarding over Look, the my, toy my dog is a, he's a bit of a loner. Like, he, he'll come out to the daycare, but he doesn't play with other dogs. But he I just think, sort of does his thing. Yeah. You know, but still. But I think this is one of the other things that, uh, in public, people need to understand. Yep. You choose a dog to match your lifestyle. Exactly. You know, and if you want to go to a cafe and go to a dog park, get a social dog. Exactly. You know. Yep. And that's what makes these guys, uh, and even just the small amount of work that I've done with her, she doesn't care about anything else but me. And yep. you know, a dog that young, with only very limited training so far. Mm -hmm. She's performing better than a lot of adult dogs would after a couple of weeks of training. Awesome. You know? You've definitely got to get these dogs to suit that lifestyle. Yeah. But you know, even dogs in places like this, just because they're going to be yard, doesn't mean they're going to be simulated. Um, well, even you know, even my place, board. like I'm, I've got 35 acres, and if I go inside to get a glass of water, there's 25 dogs at my door. <laughs> yeah. It's like go go venture out. Guys. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. So then, uh, one of the things I actually want to talk to you about was, do you know much about what the selection process is for military working dogs? Yeah, the selection process, it's a long process. We do all the stuff that we need to uh, with them, like the, the commando course out there, different environments, different um, footings, um, sounds, so gunfire, explosives, all that sort of stuff, because as you know, you've got a dog standing pretty close to a door that's going to get blown up. Uh, and then as soon as that door gets blown up, then that dog is generally the first one in there. So you're probably standing probably a little bit further away. Here we go. This opens. A couple of meters away like this. Yeah. And then you need that dog to be environmentally sound when that bloody door goes off and ready to, to go in there. Um, so they need to get used to that sort of stuff. And that's a slow progression as well. We don't just put them near a door and go bang and then see how they go. Same as when we do um, like shooting at the range. 
we don't just bring them to the range and start shooting with them next to us. It's a regression as well. So even a KSO so away, then we slowly just start playing toy. And this is over a whole heap of different sessions. Yeah, yeah. And then just getting them again, environmentally sound, eventually next to you on your hip and at the range shooting and, and, yeah. and that sort of stuff. Yeah. The reason I asked that question is a few people make, uh, commented saying uh, maybe the police or army would be interested in her. And my answer is usually they've got their own programs, they've got their own breeding and, and temperament stuff. Yep. Um, just because you have a Malamar, just because you have a Dutch Shepherd, just because you have whatever bloody working dog breed. Doesn't mean they're going to be good working Doesn't dogs. mean they're going to be yeah. good at that job. Because yeah. we've failed many Mal Malamars in the past, yeah. many that just haven't made uh, the standard. And again, to get that top tier special forces dog, it's, it's yeah. pretty hard uh, to get it. So the ones that get through really They're deserve special, it. Yeah. They're special. I have a Malamar, which you'll meet soon. I don't know what it is about them, but I'm just proud to walk next to them. Yeah, plenty, yeah. plenty of dog trainers have got them. And you can yep. see why, like they all day, every day, they're with them, yep. which is great. Um, but yeah, if you but it's alright for five. those guys because they're training all That's day. That's right. Yep. If you're nine exactly. to five and leaving the dog at home and yep. don't have the time for it, you're only walking on weekends, that kind of thing, it's uh, definitely a bad choice. All right. Yeah. So we'll bring him around. Yep. So we can go through some of the uh, equipment if you want to. We all know what a bag is. Uh, lead. We've got our little. Uh, little military harness there. They're super strong and you can uh, connect them, which we'll do a little bit later. Um, our bite toys, so this is the, the progression. I'm just gonna see what yeah. he does with um, just looking at it. Yeah, cool. So maybe he might have done some of this sort of stuff in yeah. the past. Maybe he hasn't. Depends how people have started the bite work uh, process. Right. Treat bag. <laughs> yeah, there may or may not be food in there. <laughs> then we start to go onto the sleeves. So this is more for the younger dogs. Um, you can use this by just putting it over your arm like so, um, or I just can hold it like this. So we're teaching the dogs to bite properly and we're trying to teach them to, uh, to bite with a full mouth like this. Um, now we go into like bite pillows, so they've got the handles ag again, uh, and again you can put your arm through this one as well, yeah. so this is more for the adults. Uh, then we start to progress to like the actual bite arms. Uh, again for the, the bigger dogs, uh, and then we go into our, uh, our big bite suits or our bike jackets like so. Cool, so um, generally when I'm teaching and starting the process of um, just toy work, I tie my dog up to a back tie, so it's just a bit of rope. This one's got a little bit of a bungee in it, right? so it's got a bit of a spring in it and I can use that to my advantage when I need to. Um, but the good thing about this is I can control that situation like this. So I can come in whenever I want to, all right, and he still can't reach that toy. All right, so generally I'm just trying to get them nice and excited for the toy, getting him moving around, and I need to give him a command that he can have it when I want him to. So at the moment, he's not allowed to bite that until, <laughs> until I tell him to. All right, so I'm gonna give him the command, which is why yes, yes. Now he can bite. So I can work on this by adding pressure to make him bite down, or when I want to release, <laughs> if I want to release, get him to release, or to get him to rebite, then I take the slack off the lead like so. All right. Out. And then releasing the dog with my out command or my release command, which is which is out. 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 Finished. She loves it. Yeah, doesn't she? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what we'll do is we'll fit her up into a, um, an ex Special Forces dog harness and uh, see how she goes. A little bit hard at the start sometimes. There we go. So we can make it a little bit tighter. She's only little. Yep. <laughs> Right, so I'll see, I'll see if she wants to actually fight it. Might be a little bit different if you have a go maybe, because she knows you. 
There we go. Yes, good girl. There we go. Good girl, darling. That's it. That's it. Come on. Come on. Come on. This way. This way. This way. Good girl. Yes. Yeah. 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 Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl, darling. Good girl. <laughs> Your little okay, mouth. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> yes. Come on. Yeah. Good girl, well done, well done. So as far as a dog this young, first time introducing to this, how often do they bite like that? Generally straight away, they're like she was doing, just moving around. Yeah. Uh, so again, these that's what they're born to do. Yeah. Like a lot of these dogs are born to use their mouths. Like with my dog, like yes, he's a, he's a Malinois, he's, he's pretty driven, but he's very calm and, and relaxed out in the environment, but yeah. only because I've put two oh, and a yeah, half years of training into him. constant training though. Constant, and yeah. every single day I have to keep on top of him for everything, and just the smallest things, yeah. not crossing through the boundary in the kitchen, not getting out of the car when I tell him to, you know, Which all that sort of stuff. A lot of, a lot of the time, and I, I, I did a video on this recently, for her, the actual formal training that I've done with her is really minimal. It's constant information, and that's all she wants. She wants to absorb every scenario. Have I done the right thing? What did I do wrong? And if she's looking at me going, oh, yeah, I did something wrong, and reacted correctly after the no, it's like, yep, yeah, let's keep moving. You know what I mean? Whereas most people, when you teach them dog training, they're happy to go through the one, two, threes, but then once they switch off dog training, they're like, okay, I'm going to just be myself now, yeah, watch yeah, TV, yeah. and let their dog do whatever. Yep. These guys will just go, oh, when you do that, I can go do whatever I want. Yep. I'm going to go and tear up the couch or you yep. know, rip apart the car. Yep. So, you know, that's why I keep wanting to stress, yes, they're impressive, but um, they are a full-time job. 100%. You know, they're, 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 not, they're never a dog that you're going to turn off and never, yep. never interact with again. You know, they're, yep. they're a constant by your side everywhere you go. I mean, have a look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect example. Good girl, darling, good girl. What you got? What you got? <laughs> Yeah, you want it too, don't you? <laughs> Good girl. She looks pretty cool in that little harness. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit baggy. <laughs> yeah, she's got some growing to do, doesn't she? <laughs> so it's been a very long time. Thanks awesome, for bringing man. some of the dogs along. Yeah, it's really always good to see you, me, mate. Yeah, Pleasure. good to see you. Pleasure. Um, and look forward to seeing you again soon when I come down and see the farm again. Yeah, you're coming down in uh, mid-year, aren't I'll you? I'll come down mid-year sometime. Yeah, yep. awesome. Make yep. sure you drop in. I will, 100%. You get to see the, the full pack. And the kids and everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. But thanks for coming, mate. Like. Appreciate it. Yeah, awesome, man. Thanks for having me. Mention this chat. What are you guys Whatever doing? Whatever you want. I'm just, I'm just doing it. I always do it. I can make myself look bigger. Just pushing the bike. Don't train out. anymore. <laughs> Hello, mate. So that was pretty cool. I got to see my mate Will, who uh, showed me around his facility. Did a bit of a um, demo with his dog, dude, with some of the bike work that he does. So it was interesting to have a chat to him, see what he does, but it was good just catching up with Will, seeing how he's running the show out there, seeing um, how he's got his setup going. So it's awesome. He's got everything he needs there to stimulate those dogs and, and you know, have a good time with them out there. So yeah, it was good to see. It's good to see him, a couple of his trainers, and there was obviously some training going on in the background with um, a couple of clients coming in. He's still very much got the uh, military influence in there. A lot of big um, murals and uh, camo painting. And I'm not sure if you noticed his shoes, but he got camo shoes as well. So sporting the brand, I love it. That wraps up the day for up here in Brizzy. I'll um, start heading back first thing before sunrise tomorrow morning with the girls back to Sydney. But uh, it was awesome catching up with Will from Master of Puppies. Uh, his main focus up there is dog training, whether it be obedience or whether it be uh, a little bit more serious for working dogs. Uh, he's about 40 minutes south of Brisbane and half an hour west of the Gold Coast. So if you're up this way in southeast Queensland and you're looking for a good dog trainer, 
get in contact with uh, Will from Master of Puppies and uh, the Hemaroos team will be able to help you out. But uh, it's good to see you, mate. Hope to see you again soon.